Boom! What up, guys? We are live. So the debate that you guys have been asking for is here. We got Jesse Lee Peterson joining in us. So uh, appreciate you being here, Jesse. So let's start off with a very quick introduction for anyone who's not familiar with who you are. Just yeah. explain who you are and what you do. I um, I have a nonprofit organization that I've been running for the last 32 years. And we have been rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. Uh, bringing back the order of God, God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. We also have a um, council. We have an entrepreneur academy where we are helping young men and older men to start businesses that are part of the academy. We started a credit union so we can loan them the money because some of them have bad credit, so especially young guys. So we loan them the money, they pay it back with interest. Uh, we have a women's forum, a men's forum every first Thursday night of the month, and for uh, ladies only every third Thursday night of the month, and Sunday morning for everybody, where we're dealing with all the kind of issues that they are dealing with, and counseling and all that kind of stuff. So we're pretty busy. Cool, man. Cool. Uh, also, we yeah. do a podcast, you know, uh, jessieleepeterson.com and uh, the Fallen State TV, fallenstate.tv. Cool. Yeah. So I was on uh, Jesse's show a few months ago. It was a good yeah. discussion. I think it went better than uh, both of us thought it was. No, it uh, was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> amazing. Uh, but yeah, so this, my Thanks format for coming is coming on, by the way. Yeah, dude, it was it was it was a good convo. Um, yeah. Now, my format is a little different than yours. Yours is kind of more like intense interview style. Mine is more of a debate format. So I'm not going to ask you like too, too many questions in a row. It's just we're going to flesh out certain topics. So the topic I wanted to start off with, which I think where you and I largely disagree on, uh, is premarital sex. So you say that premarital sex is bad. So my question is, why is it bad? It is bad in the sense that it become like a drug to men. Uh, women are sex dealers and men are sex addicts. And so when you start having sex, it, uh, it, uh, it, it causes you to become emotional and feel needy, like you really need the woman to make you feel good. And, and you lose sense of consciousness. And it's no different than smoking pot or doing drugs. You become addicted to it where all your attention is focused most of your attention is focused on sex rather than getting to know her and she getting to know you, uh, it become like a drug. She become the drug dealer, you become the drug addict. And so you tend to lose yourself trying to find that fix again. So you really don't see who you're about to marry or who you're involved with. Uh, Jesse, so what if you have sex in moderation and you don't get needy? Would it be okay in that circumstance? Um, if you were able to have sex in moderation, but men are not able to have sex in moderation, because when they don't have it, they feel like something is missing or they feel unloved. So they feel like they got to have it. And women know that. And so women use sex to control the man, sex and food. She know that you are addicted to her for the sex. And so she'll use that against you by not giving it to you, which makes you want it more or controlling you with it. So it's no such thing as doing it in moderation. Well, what, what if you can do it in moderation? Like me, for example, I have sex in moderation, right? I'm not addicted to sex. I have sex twice a week. I don't need it. I don't really care, but it's fun for me to do it. So for someone <laughs> like me who can have sex in moderation, would you then say it's okay? Well, I can, um, if you can go without it, for a year, then you can do it in moderation. But if you can't go without it, there's no such thing as moderation. But why would I want to go without it for a year? Why do you? Why? Uh, because you you want to have a, you want to have self control. You want to be addicted to anybody or anything that you can't do without. Well, it's like saying, uh, why don't you go a year without hanging out with your friends? I could do it, but I like my friends and I like spending time with them. It's a key part of uh, the human experience is bonding with other people. And another key part of the human experience is having sex. So, yeah, I could go a year without talking to my friends. I just don't want to. It's the same thing with sex. I could do it. I just don't want to. There's no there's no reason. There's nothing that it benefits me. If you give me $10 million to not have sex for a year, I'll do it. But unless there's a strong incentive, why would I want to do it? How about uh, how about to do it to, so that you will have self-control? Um, why do you need to bond with friends or anyone? There is no reason. 
a matter of fact, I would advise you not to bond with anyone because that's what happened through sex. You bond with the woman and now she has control over you and she has a love hate, uh, uh, a love hate thing going on with you because she knows that you don't really care about her. So she hate that because you're weak. And then she know that if uh, you stop doing it, she doesn't have control over you because women, they love control, but they hate control. They need the man to be in order so that he can bring her out of the hell that, that, that she's living in. Women are living in hell because they live in their imagination and emotions, and there's nothing good about that. And they, they need their fathers to keep them out of there when they're little kids, and they need their husband to bring them completely out of it. Jesse, where do you come up with this stuff? Uh, um, <laughs> women are living in hell? Like, you think all women are living in hell? Yes. Until they, until they forgive their mothers for turning them away from their fathers. You know, God said that we must be born. All people who are born of the flesh, all those who come through the woman are dying. But those who are born of the spirit of the father are living. So we must be, we have to overcome that fallen nature of the woman and return to the the uh, living nature of the father. And all right. so all women and men are catching hell, but the hell come through the woman. Yeah, but you, you okay, so you said earlier that um, that the woman knows when you're having sex with her that you don't actually care about her. But what if you care about the, the woman? For example, I care about my girlfriend deeply, right? So in a situation, so would you say in a situation where you care about the girl, but you're not married, is it okay to have sex then? If you care about her, you wouldn't have sex with her until you marry her. That way you can bring her into your world rather than going into her world. And women would prefer, I know women are like sluts now. Most women are sluts and, and men are slut makers. But uh, most women would rather wait until marriage. But, uh, and if the man truly loved her in the way that he should love her, he would wait until he married her and bring her into his world. But if you haven't sex with her before marriage, it's a sign of not loving her. Yeah, that's just fundamentally not true that uh, women, uh, all women will prefer to wait until marriage to have sex. Only a very small percentage of women prefer that. The vast majority of women uh, don't need to wait until marriage. They just want to feel have sex with a guy they feel comfortable with. So that, that's just like fundamentally not a true assumption that most well, women prefer to wait until marriage. Well, I said it's not true today because most women are sluts today. And, and they know that uh, sex is their... Uh, strongest drug that they can use against a man and they see how desperate the men are for sex and so they're using their body that's why they walk around half naked and these little tight things on because they'll walk around as sex dealers but it's not that they're into it uh, as much as the man but they'll do it just to have control over you. You don't think a woman could be into sex as much as a man? Once she, I mean she can yeah, she can in that she'll use it against you uh, to control you with it, but she'll prefer not to. But you don't think just for the act, like let's just take control outside out, uh, outside the picture. You don't think a woman could just enjoy the act of sex as much as man? I mean, they can today because they're, they're, they're not in their natural state of being. They've been made to be sluts. And so they can but it still won't have the same meaning that men have when they, when they have sex. Jesse, when you're watching a porno, who's, who's screaming at the top of their lungs? Is it the guy or the girl? It's the girl who's like, ah! Oh! It's not the guy. <laughs> it's not the guy that's screaming. That to me is pretty clear evidence that the woman is enjoying sex way more than the guy. You know why she's screaming? Because she's because, coming? Uh, no, she's doing it. She's screaming like that to make you think that you're doing a good job. It's all an act. She's acting out, but she could be really bored with it. Uh, uh, but she'll scream just to deceive you in order to control you, to make you think that you're doing an amazing job, but it's just to build your ego so she can maintain control over you. But why, why do you think women can't enjoy sex for the act of itself? Like, I, I don't know. Like, every girl I ever had sex with is, like, super into it. Like, or, or, I don't know if you've had some bad experiences in the past, but every girl I've ever fucked was, like, really into it. Uh, where, where's, this, <laughs> where's this idea coming from that women can't enjoy sex? Like, what do, you, what do you base that on? Because, in all honesty, the only purpose of sex is to make babies, to get married and make babies. And if you don't want babies, there's no reason to make, to have sex. If it wasn't for sex, 
men wouldn't have anything to do with women. They only want to be with them for sex because the woman is their God and they need to have some of God's false love. But they don't really care about the woman. They just care about the sex. So you would say, I don't really care about my girlfriend. Like I'm just pretending. Right. You don't really, you don't really care about her. You just care about the sex and the feel good feeling that you get from her. And that's why you're up and down. Some days you feel good with her, some days you don't. And likewise with you, when you, with her, when she's angry, she'll have sex to make herself feel better. As soon as the sex is done, now she's back to her being angry again or being out of control. I'm telling you, it's like a, a need for drugs. Um, yeah, it's I not know. about love at all. Uh, it doesn't need to be about love, but sometimes it is. I mean, I think you have a very outdated view of sex where you think that women aren't really enjoying sex and it's like a power play. And I will concede that sometimes women can use sex as a tool of manipulation, but yeah. that's, not all, that's not always the case. The vast majority of the time, women are having sex for because they enjoy sex, because they, it's fun, it's a good activity, feels good. It's, that's, that's the point of human experiences, to do things that make, break you happy and enjoy happiness. I, I, don't, I don't think it like, has to be about power and control all the time. Uh, we uh, we should be seeking happiness. We should be seeking peace, and not happiness. Because happiness comes and goes because it's a fate. It's an evil emotions, and there's no real life in happiness. And so that's why you have to keep going back to her to get your fix, because you lose that feeling of happiness, and now you feel angry or empty or like something is missing. So you go back to her to get that fix again. And now you're feeling happy. She does the same thing with you. And then in a few days, that fake happiness wears off. Now you got to go back to your, your uh, to get the fix again because it's not the real deal. Okay. Do, do you think sex is like normal and natural? Like, do you think it's a natural part of the human experience? It's, it's a normal, natural thing if you want to create children. But if you don't want to create children, there's no need for it. But there, you can have sex without having kids. I mean, there's a reason why we evolved to have sex feel so good, right? Like if it was just for <laughs> if it was just for having ki children, then it probably it would. We, there's no need for us for it to feel that good, right? So there's clearly something more to it than just like fucking having a kid. There's 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 some kind of pleasure. There's a reason why we can say God or evolution or whatever it is that you believe in. Why we evolved for sex to feel so good. Like there's got to be some kind something more to it than kids. When you haven't evolved, you have devolved. You have fallen away from yourself into a fallen state. And so you look for pleasure to make yourself feel better because you, have, you are devolving, you're dying and not living. If you had never, if man had never fallen away from what is right, he, he could not even have sex. It would be impossible because you have perfect peace. And if you have perfect peace, there's no need for anything else. So you're not evolving, you're devolving when you have sex. Here's one thing I don't get about you, Jesse. So you're, you're, you know, you're kind of on the right. You're like you, you realize that there's problems with the state and you say that, you know, there's a lot of issues and blah, 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 which I kind of agree with you on. Right. But you know that marriage can be very horrible for men. Like if you get a woman who divorces you, she can take all your money. So why would you want to encourage men to get married or wait? Wouldn't you want to do the opposite? Wouldn't you say, yo, have sex, but don't get married? Like, shouldn't your, <laughs> shouldn't your approach be the opposite? I would say stop seeking pleasure. Then you wouldn't have sex before marriage. And you would don't, men have to overcome the woman. The woman is the man's God, right? And so he's trying to get something from God. It's God, the man's God. And Satan is the woman's God. And so what I was saying, not to have, because I made a baby out of wet lot too. Fortunately, I didn't have to go through all that child pain stuff because during those days, women were not into taking men to court and making them pay and all that kind of stuff, right? But it's best, if you want a family, it's best to wait until you get married and don't look for a woman. You look for what is right. Overcome that fallen state. And if it's meant for you to get married, the right woman would come along and you would get with her in the right way. And there would, it would be there would be no divorce. You would be together until death do your part. But men are marrying the wrong woman ba uh, based on sex and not on true love. But and that's it, why. So they end up marrying the devil and they end up catching hell the rest of their lives.
Uh, but if, if marriage, if we, if we acknowledge the fact that marriage ends so poorly for so many men, then why would you even want to encourage men to get married? If they can, if, if, 50% of marriages end in divorce. 80% of uh, marriages, the woman initiates divorce. Why would you want to encourage men to do that? That's a good question. Well, I don't, I, I want them to, I, I recommend that they get married only if they want to start a family, right? If they want children. If you're not going to have children, there's no reason to get married because a family is one man, one woman, and children. If you're not going to have children, there's no reason to get married. Uh, um, and I encourage them to overcome the raw need for the woman so that when they do get, if and when they do get married, they won't be controlled by the woman. They, they will control the woman. She will not control them. And a woman that uh, uh, is being controlled by her man in the right way, being controlled by her husband would never leave because that's what she desires is to be led by the man and not the man to follow her. It's just that most men are really weak now. And they end up following the woman. And all that does is create problems. Because as you know, every time the man listens to the woman, he suffers. A man should never, ever, ever listen to a woman. And But these men, it's backwards now. And they're listening to the woman. So they end up with the wrong woman. And that's why they're catching so much hell. Um, yeah, I would uh, agree with parts of what you said. We have a question from the audience. Alex, can you ask him, is there any great things of women or are we literally only worth sex? Can you ask what now? I'm sorry. If, are there any great things about women, or are they only worth? Are, are they only worth it for the sex? Um, if you find the right one, it, and if you want a family, it'll be good. You know, they're good to have families in that they will stay home, they will watch over your children, they will clean your house, prepare your meals, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, do things like that, and 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 then love you in the right way because you love what's right and she love you and follow you that would be amazing all the things you mentioned though are super basic like clean the house uh like cook, cook the food you can hire people to do all that i have a cleaning lady i have a meal prep company i think there's something a lot more that a woman can bring you than just like basic manual labor right you can like just hire what, for example what, what can she bring you? She can bring you a sense of companionship. She can be she can be your she can be your closest ally. She can she can help you walk you uh you know with life whenever you have issues. Like for example, my girlfriend she gives me so many ideas for my business. Uh, whenever I have a moment where I'm struggling, she helps me. She's always there for me. She helps do research for me. Uh, like my closest ally. Like that to me is worth so much more than just her like cleaning my house, which I can pay eighty dollars for. But if you were married to her, you were. Uh, you you wouldn't be able to use her in that way because you would need her to watch over your children for you, and it take you know it's a lot being married, staying home, raising the man children, making sure that they get homeschooled and fed and things like that. Children need the mother to be home with them and not hauling them off to some daycare center or babysitter and all that kind of crap. That's why God created the, the woman and the man so that the woman could be the help to the man in raising his family. I mean, I sort of agree with you on that. Yeah, I think if you're having, uh, if you are having kids, it is definitely beneficial if uh, the mother is there for the kids. So yeah, right. sure, I, I, I agree with that part. But and like, a woman and a woman that overcomes her mother and love her father would be happy to be a woman. I meet them all the time now. They go and forgive their mothers for turning them against their fathers, away from their fathers. And they forgive their fathers for not for not protecting them from the mother. And they get them they realize, wow, it's nice to be a woman. I don't need to be in competition with a man. And so they love being a woman and being a wife and a mother, but a woman who is not overcome the fallen state, she she would be unhappy being in her natural state uh, of being a wife and a mother. Okay. I mean, yeah, I think, I think you have a really outdated way of looking at like sex and relationships, but uh, when, when you say outdated, what do you mean outdated? Uh, meaning like a hundred years ago, it was a common thought that like, oh, sex is something for the man, right? We lived in kind of like Victorian times, but nowadays I think most people realize that sex is really, really fun for the woman too. And it's a mutual experience. It's not just something like I take sex from a girl. It's like, we're both doing something that's fun. But, um, it's not, Sex is not, I mean, what I'm telling you, when no, when when life was uh, operating in that way, they had families, 
tight families, the grandparents were around, and the, the children. It created family, but when you change that order, it made women feel like they're the same as a man, you know, have the same rights and all that crap. Then everything fell apart. Look what's happening now when you get married and things like that. Because the woman has been, her ego has been deceived in making her think, think that she's equal to a man and she's not. Oh, that's, so what, you, don't, you don't think, like, when you say a woman's not equal to a man, what do you mean specifically? Uh, men were created to lead and women were created to follow. Uh, it's not in her nature to lead, it's in her nature to follow. And men were created to follow God, follow what's right, and the woman were made to follow the man. But because men are, uh, the woman have been made to feel like she's equal to a man, it's hard to find a decent woman that you can really marry and start a family with, one that will obey her husband. Is, is that a general statement or an absolute statement when you say that uh, women were created to follow? Is that you, are you talking about generality or are you talking about like absolutely? Absolutely. Every woman on this side of heaven were created to follow and not lead. Look at the family when, when the woman is leading in the family. The kids end up becoming alcoholics and drug addicts and gang members and thugs and all kind of stuff. Um, uh, hating themselves and their fellow man. It's a mess. Look at the blacks for an example. I'm sure you see what a mess black people are in, right? Um, yeah, some of them for sure. But I think yeah. going going back Most to- Most of them. I mean, I, yeah, I, I would agree that generally that's true. Like generally men follow and women lead. However, there's so many exceptions to that. Like we're on YouTube right now. You know the CEO of YouTube, Susan, is a woman, right? What a mess. YouTube? Are you kidding me, dude? It's, it's one of the most profitable platforms ever. But that doesn't mean success though. You don't think YouTube is a success? Anybody can make money, but they can't lead. But you, you don't think YouTube is a successful company? Well, I don't know what you mean. I don't know because I don't know the depths of YouTube. You know what I mean? But uh, even if you do have a woman as a, uh, doing that, she's not as good at it as a man would be because it's not in her nature. I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like YouTube is a pretty big, successful company. Uh, and it's led by a woman. It was actually a woman's idea for YouTube to be uh, bought out by Google, this uh, Susan Chick. Uh, so Do you think that women were created to lead? I think that people, I think overwhelmingly, I think men tend to make better leaders. However, I think there's plenty of good female leaders out there. I think that human beings are very dynamic and variable people. And some of us have different qualities. But I think if we do an overall average, yes, I would say that a man makes on average a better leader uh, because they're more assertive, they have testosterone. But there's not to say there's not some great female And they're not leaders. as emotional and mental. Um, yeah, there's some men who are very, very emotional too. I don't know, man. I think Maybe I because they have not overcome their mothers. A mental, emotional, mental man has the nature of his mother. That's why he has to be uh, returned to the father. He must be born of the father so he can overcome that emotional stuff. It's like with the blast, all this violence that you see coming from them right now, robbing and raping and murdering and stealing and killing and begging for affirmative action and reparation. That and joining gangs and things like that, that's the anger of the mother that has made a home in the, in the boys and the girl, the adults, young and old. It's not natural for a man to be angry like that. It's an unnatural state for him. Uh, yeah, usually people get angry because they have past trauma, insecurities. And so look at the trauma that the black woman has brought upon the black children, right? Because she didn't have the man there to lead her in how to raise the children. And he wasn't there to protect her the children from her anger. And so they have destroyed the kids and now they call it racism and all type of isms. And it's not ism. It's a spiritual battle between good and evil, wrong versus right. How do you deal with your girlfriend's anger when she's just mad about nothing? Well, my girlfriend, that's, that's, my girlfriend doesn't do that though. Like I, I picked a very good girl, so she doesn't get mad at me about nothing. Do you correct her when she's wrong? Uh, yeah, but she, it's not like she's wrong often, but yeah, if she says something that I disagree with, yeah, I tell her that I think she's wrong. When you correct her when she's wrong, how does she deal with it? Um, she usually listens to me and then we have a conversation. She does? Yeah. Oh, you must be doing it very softly. Honey, would you please go sit down? 
Well, I mean, she's not like a child. I don't tell her to like sit down, but like, like <laughs> no, I didn't use that as an example. She's not like a right. dog. I'm like, go sit, good girl, good girl. Like, yeah, like, I don't treat her like a dog. But <laughs> but yeah, if we have like a disagreement over something, which we don't always do, I mean, yeah, I'll I'll speak to her like I would speak to one of my friends. I speak to her calmly and normally. I mean, I think that's much better than like yelling, which all, just doesn't lead to anything good. Amazing. Why? How would you speak to like a girl? Would you be like, "You dumb man, sit over there"? Like, like, do you think that would be a more effective style? No, I, I, I mean, you don't need to yell to 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 lead, you know, but you need to guide her because women need men to guide them in the right way to go. Do you ever listen to her? Yeah, I listen when she talks. So you follow her at times? Uh, when she has a good idea, sure. Really? That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, she, my, my girlfriend has good ideas. Like, yeah, if she has a good idea, like, uh, and she's like, oh, babe, I have a good idea. Let's do this. I'm not going to be like, oh, you're a woman. We can't do anything you ever say. Like, I'm gonna be like, oh, that's a good idea. No, yeah. uh, an idea is not leadership. I mean, of course, they can have ideas about things, but that's not what it means to lead. Give me and an like example. Like you mentioned a person that is a CEO of, of Google YouTube, or somewhere. YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Uh, she could have ideas about, oh, let's make this this way or that way, but that's not what leadership is. What, what, what in your idea is leadership? Like, how would a girlfriend lead her boyfriend? She can't. Well, okay, well, like, give me an example of how a woman would try to lead her man. By telling him how to think, how he should act, uh, encouraging him to be emotional because women think emotions are good, not realizing that it's evil, it's not good. Uh, she would, uh, if he, if she want to move to Florida or New York, but he lives in California, has a job and everything. And she said, well, I have a job in New York. I got to move. And he give it, and you got to come with me. If he decides to drop his job and give up his life to follow her, that's bad leadership because he will regret it. Oh, yeah. Well, I would just consider that being a shitty girlfriend. Yeah, my, my girlfriend doesn't do any of that, but uh, I think we're defining leadership in totally different ways. But yeah, like, I, she, and doesn't, also, she doesn't try to get me, change how I think. Uh, I, I do. Uh, one thing you said that's interesting, you said emotions are bad? Yes. Yeah. Emotions are evil. Um, um, yeah, emotions are evil. You, you really think emotions are evil? Without a doubt. You don't think that's just part of being human? Is having that's, emotions? That's well, well, human nature is evil. That's why you must be born of the nature of God, because human nature is, is the nature of the devil, of evil, right? And that's why you have to overcome the anger so you can overcome that emotional stuff. God is a dispassionate God, and the devil is a passionate God. And so everyone, everyone, I don't care how rich, how poor, whatever color, male or female, everyone that has anger has those emotions that come straight out of hell, but they think it's them. They have identified with it as them. And even though they're miserable living that way, they work hard to maintain happiness. And then they're up and down because it, all emotions are anger. All emotions are evil. So you're saying you don't have emotions? I have it a little bit still, but I'm overcoming it, right? Because I realize that it's an ego nature and once you, your heart is changed by God from anger to love, he will destroy the ego nature, give you a clear mind and get rid of all those emotions. Because if you notice an emotional person, they have, they think and then they feel. You can't have those emotions unless you have thoughts, right? You think of something good, now you feel good. You think of something bad, now you feel bad. You, you do the thoughts give you ideas of what to do to make yourself feel better. You do it. Then the thoughts give you ideas of what to do to make yourself feel bad. Now you feel bad. And after a while, you want to jump off a bridge because you're an emotional, evil person. It just sounds like you're repressing your own emotions, which I don't think is good for you. In what do you mean? Term. Like you're, you're saying like I'm working on like getting rid of my emotions. That's, that's, you can't get rid of emotions. That's like getting rid of breathing. It's part of the human experience. And if you suppress your emotions, you don't let them like actually like, you know, uh, whatever, like you don't actually let them manifest. I'm not saying you should be dictated by your emotions, but if you can't, if you suppress your emotions, that's not going to be good for you in the long term. That's horrible no. for your mental well-being. I'm having the best time of my life as I overcome the ego. And it's not me, but that nature, the, the, um, uh, the thoughts, 
all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything, right? You get the thoughts and the feelings. I'm overcoming that. And as a result of overcoming that, I'm having the best time of my life. Because right. it's not based on people, places, or things. It's not based on what I have or don't have. There's no uh, comparing to anyone. I'm just able to be myself without having to be in competition or trying to find love or anything from anyone or anything. If you really want to have an amazing life, a peaceful life, you have to overcome the ego nature because the ego nature is not good. Yeah, I agree. You shouldn't be led by your ego, but that's not the same thing as saying that you can overcome emotions. That's like overcoming breathing. Like you, you, Emotions <laughs> are part of being human. Would you say, okay, Jesse, would you say that there's an element of sexual repression that's going on with you? No, not at all. Well, I'm telling you, and I, and I know that you probably don't understand what I'm saying. No, because I understand. You, you do understand about um, that emotions are not good. Uh, no, that part, you're completely losing me on how emotions aren't good. Emotions are part of the human experience. They're not good or bad. They're just, they're, it's like breathing. It's not good or bad. It's part of what makes you human. That's like saying, that's like saying dreaming is it good or bad. It's just what you do. When you say emotions are good, you, did you say it's neither good nor bad? Yeah, they're neither good or bad. What, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, why are people feeling good and feeling bad, feeling good and feeling bad if it's not good or bad? We evolved to have emotions so that we can use them to, for example, uh, let's say uh, we're in a situation where there's a bunch of people and someone attacks me, right? We have the emotion of anger so we can defend ourselves. Let's say, for example, someone does something really nice for you. We have the, uh, you know, the emotion of happiness or, you know, uh, bonding, right? So that we can basically say, okay, well, like that person did something good for me. Let's say something really bad happens to you and like your mom dies. That's like you have the emotion of sadness, right? That's like, oh shit, like emotions are just a natural part of being a human and you can't repress them. There's, there's like no way that's possible. You can't get rid of emotions either. You can't over, you can't do it of yourself because it's a spiritual battle. And if if emotions were good, why do you think there's so much violence in the world today and suicide, drugs, overdose, and all those things, wars and things like that? If emotions are good, why do you think all this evil stuff is happening? Well, I didn't say they were good. I said they're not neither good or bad. Well, there has to be a good or a bad or right or wrong. Would you say breathing is good or bad? Say what now? Would you say breathing is good or bad? Breathing is natural. Exactly. So are emotions. Emotions are unnatural. <laughs> you really think emotions are unnatural? Like you don't think? Yeah, like, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a natural, unnatural state of being. If 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 emotions were good, why do people work so hard to maintain that, and, and it never works? Maintain what? so-called good emotions uh because emotions feel good good emotions feel good bad emotions feel bad but why not overcome it and not let your life be based on feelings at all because that's like saying why don't you overcome breathing like why do you need to rely on oxygen because you you cannot overcome something that's part of the human nature that's like why don't you overcome going to the toilet like why do you you waste so much time <laughs> taking a shit why don't you try to overcome so you never have to take a shit again like but, you can't do that all you're gonna do is wind up holding it holding it in for two hours or for two days and then you're gonna get diarrhea and shit your pants right you can't overcome <laughs> and it's the same thing that happens with emotions it's not gonna be two days maybe it'll be a few months or a few years but eventually those emotions will explode out of you but you can't compare you can because you just did but there is no comparison between breathing and emotions the comparison is they're both oh. a natural, natural part of the human experience. So if, well, why, when these people go to these dumb psychologists and psychiatrists and counselors and things like that, why do, if emotions are neither good nor bad, why are they giving antidepressant pills and pills that make you feel good, make you feel bad? Why do they, they, they call it post-traumatic stress disorder and all that? If emotions were neither good nor bad? Uh, because some people have a brain imbalance and some people are going through a really hard time and they use SSRIs to uh, help people feel better. I'm not like the biggest advocate of like fucking antidepressants, but yeah, I think sometimes their use is warranted if someone is like really depressed because they had something bad happen. Like for example, I can tell you with uh, my mom, 
uh, when our dog died, my mom was really, really sad. She went to a psychiatrist. She couldn't get over it, and they gave her an SSRI. A few years later, you know, she got over it, and then she got off the SSRI. So, yeah, I think that... Um, I think sometimes the use of SSRIs can be warranted when people have a brain imbalance or they're feeling too much more sadness than they can handle. You said where her dog died? Yeah, our family dog, yeah. Well, why was she so into a dog that it would have that kind of effect on her? What was missing in her life that she tried to get it from the dog? Who let the dogs out? Nothing is missing. What, have you ever had a dog, Jesse? Yes. You didn't find it sad when your dog passed away? No. So you weren't sad when your dog died? I remember as a kid, you know, I had a, a dog. And I do, when I reflect on that, I do remember as a kid, my dog died. And I felt this sad. But when I had a dog as an adult, uh, I've never felt sad about a dog dying. It's just a dog. Dogs don't have love. They don't give love. And uh, uh, so it was just a dog. It was a pet. It wasn't a comforter. That's one of the saddest things I've ever heard, man. Like, if, if, my, if my dog passed away, I would be devastated. Like, you didn't have any kind of bond with your dog? No, not like that. I, I you know, I enjoyed the dog. I went hunting with the dog. Uh, I enjoyed the dog, but not bonding with an animal. That doesn't make sense. You know something wrong with you if you bonding with an animal. And animals don't have love. Why would you bond with a love a loveless animal? Yeah, they do, dude. Dukes, dogs are the most loving, loyal creatures ever. Why do you say that? You can just see, like, if you have a dog that you have a close bond with, my dog just follows me around, it hugs me, it, like, sits on my shoulder. You can tell the dog loves you. But no, that's because you're making the dog uh, feel good in that you're taking care of the dog. But anyone that thinks that they're getting love from a dog or a cat or a rabbit or uh, whatever... It's only because they lack love. They don't have love. So they have a false idea that they're getting love from an animal. Sometimes I see it's so bad, man. It's so bad that I see um, people now bringing dogs or airplanes. I'm like, look at that dummy. Why would the airline allow them to bring their animals on the airplane? You know what I mean? Wait, so but you... they say it's a comfort dog or something. But Wait, the so person is still crazy, even though they have the dog with them, they're still mentally and emotionally insane. So you didn't feel any sadness when your dog died? None at all when you, when you were an adult? No. That's crazy, man. But like what, when I was growing up, we didn't bond with dogs. I mean, that's something new, I think. That's because there's no love in families and there's no love now. And so the people are trying to find... and I. And I think white people do bond with their dogs more so or cats or, than black people do because I notice in my neighborhood, I see a lot of white women walk around with dogs and things like that. And they have a false sense of happiness. You can see that they're still miserable, but they have a false sense of happiness rather than real happiness. Okay, would you be sad if one of your friends died? <laughs> maybe, for, I don't, maybe for a minute, but not. I wouldn't drool over it you know what i'm saying but the, you it just sounds like you've you've created this really weird type of space in your mind where you just suppress sadness i don't think that's good for you dude you should you be know, sad if your friend dies you should be sad if your dog i dies. would i mean i probably would be sad for a minute but it wouldn't go on for days and weeks just for a minute if your closest friend died you would be sad just for a minute i'd give it 24 hours or something 20, like that 24 hours really if like your yeah. closest friend dies you're just sad for 24 hours? Well, why should I be sad after that? Because it was a human being who you had a very strong connection with. But the human being is gone. Right, but you, you still have that bond that's missing. Like, you should go through the grieving process. I would, say that if right. you, I would say that if you don't feel sad when one of your closest friends dies, then you are a sociopath. There's, there's <laughs> anyone else who's, like, actually, like, a healthy human being would feel a lot of sadness over that. I'm not saying you should dedicate the rest of your life to crying over your friend, but there should be a significant amount of sadness. And if you don't feel that, then there's like something going on with your brain. That's like well, I, you know, like I said, I would be sad for 24 hours, maybe a day or so, but that's about it. Right. And, and, um, I, I'll tell you an amazing story. You want to hear an amazing story about death and dying? I mean, yeah, about sadness and dying. Yeah, go ahead. 
So my father expired a couple of years ago, right? And my father and I was tight. Very, we became very tight. And um, uh, I, I loved my father. My father loved me. I had no more anger toward him or anything. And so when my father expired, I didn't even feel like he died. It, it seemed like he had not expired. I can see that his body had no life in it. And so I, uh, uh, I, you know, we had the funeral. My brother, some of my brothers and sisters were tripping out, crying, carrying on, really out of it. And I realized that they were feeling that way because they never forgave my father. They had this anger. So when he died, they felt guilty. Because if you notice, when human beings die, whether it's your daddy, your mama, your friend, your sister, your brother, you're not, these people are not crying over the person that died. They're crying over their own ego self. It's about them. It's not about the person that died because the person is gone. The person is dead. And, and, but when people carry on about a dead person, it's about them and not about the dead person. Because when my father died, I didn't carry on. I didn't cry. I didn't act that way because I didn't, I loved him. I didn't resent him. People with anger carry on it. You know, when someone died and they, oh, 50 days gone by, they're still crying over mama or daddy or a cat or a dog. It's all about themselves. It's not about the dead. What if your son died? Would you, how long would you be sad for? Same thing. 24 hours? I give it maybe 20, 25. Just, okay, so the son gets an extra hour, right? <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you, are you trolling or are you serious? You would only be sad for 24, 25 hours if your son died? Yeah, because what's the purpose? If what's the purpose of being sad after that? Because sadness leads to depression. If you're sad too long, it leads to depression. You realize you had an amazing time. The person is gone. May their soul rest in peace, and you move on with life. Jesse, I have just... a, I have grandkids, great grandkids, right? And I enjoy hanging out with them, and blah blah blah. But I'm not bonding with them, so if something should happen, I have to lose my life too. It just sounds like you've completely cut yourself off from your emotions. Well, I haven't cut myself off. Emotions are ego. And when the ego dies, the emotion disappears as well. And now you have real love for all people, no matter what. Yeah, but I think like 99% of people would tell you that there's something wrong, that if your son passes away and you're only sat for like 25 hours, that's not really like a uh, normal... Uh, sense of uh not a normal i guess uh mental whatever place to be in is where no. you like experience where you're like just oh my son died but it's okay i'll just go on with my life he was cool yeah you know we had some good times normal based on what based on like 99.9 percent .9 of human beings and how they operate well that's because 99.9 percent .9 of human beings are in a fallen state they have fallen away from god they've been turned away from their earthly fathers and so they're looking, they're out in the wilderness looking for something to make themselves feel bad, uh, good. And so they attach themselves to the first thing that comes along. And, but that's not love. You're never going to find peace. That's why you have to overcome the fallen state if you want to have a, a peaceful life. You can live in this world and have total peace, but you got to overcome the fallen state. And that doesn't mean you won't have friends and family and things like that, but you won't be attached to them in a way that if you should lose them, you lose your life. Yeah, my, my assessment, honestly, is that you've just cut off yourself. You've become emotionally repressed and sexually repressed. You've just cut yourself <laughs> off from everything that makes you human. I don't know how that's a good thing, though. But um, those things, I just told you, though, human nature is evil. Human nature is, is not about love. It's about hate. Uh-huh. Have you noticed that? No. Do you think human beings have love? Yeah, of course. Where's the proof that they have love? Where's what? Where's the proof that they have love? Um, you see selfless acts, mothers doing selfless acts for their kids. No. Uh, bro, you, you don't see that? Mothers do not do selfless acts. My mother did. Mothers are, mothers are the most ego-driven people on this side of heaven. Why do you think that um, when their sons grow of age, 18 and older, they're ready to leave home, but the mother won't let them. Oh, you need to stay home and make money. Oh, you need to save this and save that. Do it this way or that way, right? Uh, or if the son said, no, I'm leaving. 
and the mother get mad. You don't love me. All the things I've done for you. Now you want to leave. And, and God forbid if the son get married, all of a sudden the mama want to move in and she'll destroy her son's marriage because of her jealousy of his wife. And um, she'll find some reason. Oh, I want to be with the grandkids. Uh, she'll run her husband, husband off to be with the son. She'll make him her husband because she's not, she's an ego driven person. It's not about the son or daughter. It's about her. Did you have a bad relationship with your mother? No. You had a good one? My mother, uh, if you saw my mother, she, good Christian woman, she dead now. She dead. But she, um, uh, the only thing that my mother did wrong, was, as most mothers do, is try to turn the children away from the fathers because of her jealousy. The worst thing that uh, can happen to children for a woman, the mother, is for them to love their father over her. She, mothers can't stand it when boys and girls love their fathers. So they'll turn them away, right? My, my mother did that. But other than that, it, everything was fine. But your mother did try to turn you away from your father, right? Yeah, she 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 resented my father. Oh, and okay. So, and so she didn't like, like all women do. All women resent the children's father. Wait, no, right? no, no, Jesse, hang on a second. Okay, this makes sense now. I think you're just projecting your experience because my mother didn't do that. Uh, most of the people I know, their mothers didn't do that. My mom wanted me to have a great relationship with my dad. So I think you're projecting what happened in your family just onto the world. It happened to all families in one way or another. You just didn't, haven't paid attention to it to see. But it never women, happened in my family. So what? It never happened in my family. I, ha I had a great mom who was super supportive. And I get walked. calls every day from around the country and some from around the world. It's, it doesn't matter the language, male or female, the money they have or don't have. They're, they're, you're right, Jesse. I resent my mother. I just didn't know I resented my mother. I thought I loved my mother, but that emotion that they felt for the mother come from anger. And they are afraid to tell their mothers. I say, okay, go and apologize. Your mother could not help herself, right? I say, go and forgive her for what she's done. Most of them are afraid to do it because they have the wrong type of love. They have resentment toward their mother's and not love. They think that emotion that they feel and the mother make them feel guilty because I had you, I took care of you, I raised you, I was different, this, that kind of thing, right? So they feel like they owe their mother something, not realizing that they resent their mothers because you don't owe your mother anything. Your mother and your father had you, they decided to make a baby, they took care of you. That's what parents are supposed to do, not with the idea that you're going to take care of them. Yeah, I understand that it happens, and I'm sure that people come to you telling their story. It's the same reason why a lot of people email me and say, oh, Alex, I have a horrible Tinder profile. But that is because there's a sample bias going on because I talk about Tinder in my channel, so people come to me when they have bad Tinder profiles. You talk about bad relationship with the mothers, so of course people who have bad relationship with their mothers will come to you. The people who have good relationship with their mothers, why would they come to you? Like, why Well, so would I'm saying they have good relationship, but they come to me too. And then they realize that they don't have good relationship with their mother. So do you think it's impossible that someone would have a mother? And, I, and again, I talk with callers from around the world. I counsel with them, you know, by Skype or some come into the office or by phone. It's the same story everywhere. Every gender, every culture, every religion, every language. The devil talked to everybody with the same about the same lie. Do you think it's impossible that someone could have a mother who does not turn them against their dad? Only if the mother has overcome her anger, forgiven her mother and, and forgiven her father, then that's possible. But if she has not done that, um, um, if she has not done that, then it, it's impossible. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I guess my mother then overcame her mother because yeah, I never had any of that. <laughs> my mom definitely did not try to turn me against my dad or anything like that. Uh, okay, uh, okay, I, I want to I change gears a little bit. So I was doing a good amount of research about you, and this just kept coming up and up and up and up over and over again. And those are like the allegations. Like people kept saying, oh, Jesse, you know, had a scandal with this guy, with that guy. Why are there so many allegations against you? If I were you, I would not get into gossip. That's a woman's nature. So well, I, I, I don't get into gossip. Don't deal in gossip. 
I wouldn't do that, right? Because people tell me things about you and other folks, but I tell them to go to the person and forgive them and move on with your life and stay out of other people's business. Yeah, but it seems like there was just like so many people. I don't care if the whole world did it. It doesn't matter. But why are there so many people like coming out? You have to go to them. I tell you, I'm not going to do that. So you're not going to pull me down that road. You talk to them if you want more information about it. Well, I, I want to ask you, though. And you said that you were not going to even ask me about this. I never said that. Yes, you did. You what? said that when I want to talk to you about it, I'll let you know. No, I never said that. I never said when, I was When I was on your show, when you was on my show? No, we, we, oh, okay. we, we, we never had this discussion. Yeah, but you, I'm not going to discuss it with you. Okay. Because it's not your business, first of all. And there's, it wouldn't do you any good. It'll just make your ego, because it seemed that you love gossip, it will make your ego feel good. But it wouldn't do anything good for you. No, but it kind of ties into the main argument. So my argument is that I think that you have cut off from your emotions and you've become repressed. And it kind of makes sense that if you become very sexually repressed, that that manifests in like really weird ways, right? Like you see this all the time in the Catholic Church. Like you see like all the priests who go like celibate for their whole life and then they begin to all these scandals, right? So I think that like that would totally make sense and explain why you feel the way you do and why you become so repressed. Okay, if you want to believe that, there's nothing I can do about it. Believe what you want. You can't come, once a person believe a lie, you can't converse, you can't convince them that it's a lie. So believe what you want about that, man. I, I have no response to you for that. So you would say all those people are lying? I just told you, do you hear me? I'm trying to hear you. So you would say all you those people- You don't act like you hear me. I am definitely hearing you, bro. I tell you, I'm not getting into gossip with you. You call them and ask them about it. If you love gossip, gossip, you're talking to the wrong person. It just sounds like you're trying to deflect, Jesse. Oh, did he just drop off? <laughs> he rage quit. <laughs> uh, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Uh, <laughs> oh, there you are. What are you doing, Jesse? Are you are you on the show? Nope, he's quitting. Nope, he's here. Hello? Nope, he's he's quitting. Oh, he's done. <laughs> I had a feeling he was gonna rage quit. Yeah, I was like, I felt like I would be doing a disservice to my audience and to like the truth if I didn't bring it up. I try to do it in a respectful way, but yeah, he like ran away from that, which just makes me think that there's something going on there. Uh, like when I was I was doing research. Um, on him before this and there's just so many allegations like it was his like i wrote this down because it was just like way too many like if it was one or two i'll be like okay maybe this is just people talking shit. but it was like his co-host who he was very close with it was this guy samuel trayvon chapman armin martin francis there was like his twitter at one point like the gay pornography post uh and there were so many videos of people like publicly confronting him uh about this and the fact that he runs away from it so hard just makes me think that it's true because if you accuse me or something, if you're like, Alex, like you're, um, you're like, whatever, you're involved in the scandal, I'll be like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, show me the evidence, right? Like, I wouldn't run away from it. To me, it would be like funny. But yeah, the fact that he like runs away from it so hard just makes me think it's all true. And I would stake my life. And it all makes sense, right? Because you have a guy who's completely cut himself off uh, from his emotions, right? Who's extremely sexually repressed and tries to shame people for engaging in something that's normal. And then he has all these scandals. So of course it makes sense. It's like a typical like hypocrite, uh, you know, like that's just like saying one thing and doing another. So yeah, it all makes sense. Uh, he just totally like rage quit and just like ran away from that. And he just hides behind like religion and all that stuff. Uh, that was pretty funny watching him like rage quit though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be probably so butthurt after this, but yeah, I also, also it was really weird because I was watching videos and like the people who are alleged, and again, this is all alleged, right? But uh, when he, uh, there's some people that allege this against him. And these are people who come publicly and showed, it, uh, showed their face. They confronted him about this on the street. They were like, Jesse, why did you do this to me? They had the camera and uh, what's it called? And he like ran away from that too. So it kind of makes sense that he's going to run away from this as well. It's just like when you run away from something, all you're doing is proving that whatever people are saying is true, right? So that's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, he... Yeah, he rage quit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is, maybe he's a nice guy, but although the stuff he says is just like so messed up. Like, I didn't feel any sadness when my dog died. Like, are you fucking human? Like, are you a sociopath or something? Uh, you know, I would only feel sadness for 25 hours if my son died. Like, 
like, what the hell is wrong with you, dude? Like, are you okay mentally? Like, this is this is like this is like a man of God. Like, this is just like a really sick, twisted hu human individual who's cut himself off from his emotions, and they manifest in like really, really uh, weird ways. Yeah, people are saying he asked you to stop talking about. It. Yeah, but I'm not gonna. It's my show. And I'm going to press the issue until I get a satisfactory answer. So no one's going to tell me on my show to like, oh, we can't talk about this. I never promised that I wasn't going to bring it up, right? It would be different if I did. Uh, and yeah, I think it directly ties into the argument. And honestly, there's too many allegations for me not to bring it up. If it was like one or two people, then okay, maybe it's just false. It's been like seven or eight people. Like they're all just coming forward. So this was pretty funny. Uh, I'm sure God will be very pleased with this. Uh, okay, let's see what uh, let's see what questions we have. <laughs> I'll do questions for a little bit. Uh, I gotta press the issue till he quits because I'm getting crushed. Oh yeah, dude, I was totally getting crushed. Yeah, yeah, like no, for sure, he destroyed me. Uh, uh, Alex, what's your dog's name? He's Rhaegar. Yeah, you can Google all the uh, all the uh, allegations. Bro, seriously, can you stop? You're making JLP emotional right now. Oh, no. He's going to feel emotions. All the JLP losers in here coping. Dude's a loser, LMAO. Yeah. Uh, uh, I missed the drama while busy painting the pentagram out. What's the accusation? Uh, the accusation is that he's had, like, fucking uh, a whole bunch of men that he's had sex with. Again, allegedly. But there's so many. Like I've been, I've been in this space for five years. I've never had one allegation against me. But one allegation doesn't mean much. But imagine if there's like seven or eight allegations, and then at one point your Twitter, you like a gay porn page, and that, that's like there for several hours. Like, no. Uh, okay. What else do we have? Uh, I'd rather you press later, you got cut short. I don't know, I think an hour is good enough. Uh, yeah, sure, man, I'm down. This is, this is so funny. This was not bad faith, dude. This was public information. There's been seven or eight people who come forward. It's directly related to my argument. It is not bad faith for me to bring up uh, hypocrisy. Um, yeah, if seven or eight accusers come out in the future, in in the future, if I have seven or eight people who come out against me, and uh, you see me running away from the question, then yeah, probably you should believe them. Just got laid at my lunch break grill at gas station. Thanks, BWF. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I'll debate anybody. I'll debate anyone at any time. Just shoot me an email and we can set it up. Your logic is flawed and you go on with the woke agenda. Uh, no, I definitely am not woke. I debate SJWs all the time. Uh, I push back on that more than any, pretty much anyone else I know. So I'm definitely not woke. I definitely debate against the flaw agenda. And the reason people haven't made false allegations against me is because I haven't done anything. Because I have a girlfriend, I have sex with her and not with random dudes. Uh, so, yeah. Alex, how do you stay so grounded? I don't know, I've done a lot of these. Uh, what else do we have? Al, to be fair, he's a political figure. There's a good chance in some more of those stories could just be far left people. Uh, I would think so if it was like one or two people, but it's seven or eight people. He got caught liking a gay porn thing on his Twitter. Uh, they've all publicly shown their face. Several of them have actually uh, uh, swore under oath and they've been subpoenaed. Uh, so now it's just, it's just it's just too many for it to not to be true. And the way he runs away from it, and the, also combined with the fact that he's so sexually repressed, he's not married, right? So he's not having sex with anybody. Like, where do you think all that sexual energy is going? Uh, okay, what else do we have? 
best way to debate trolls debate me more they always get shut down uh but yeah cool all right hopefully you guys enjoyed that that was fun for me uh i had a feeling he was gonna run away from that uh I try to bring it up in the nicest way possible, but yeah, I had a feeling he was going to run away from it because every time he's been confronted on this, uh, he runs away. So, And usually when someone runs away from something, it means there's probably a little bit of an element of truth there. Uh, but yeah. I, I used to enjoy your content, man, but I'm thinking you're actually mature. This interview proved it. Thanks, Alex, but I'm done. On subpar, take care. All right, dude, I'll be sure to uh, lose a lot of sleep over this. Thank you for the super chat, though. Uh, I mean, I think I would be doing my audience and the truth a disservice if I didn't bring up something that is very likely to be true. Uh, I would not be a good interviewer if I just let that slide. So uh, it would have been like, I don't really get off on like conflict or something like that. It, it's just like, I can't like ignore the elephant in the room. And I don't think that that's a sign of good interviewer. But if that's, you know, if that's too much for you, then hey, you know, sorry to uh, lose you. What about your allegations? Uh, I don't have any allegations. No one ever, no one's ever come forward and accused me of anything. Alex, thanks for bringing, yeah, for sure. Alex asked a direct question about accusation was a problem that people wanted to buy. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like I don't understand how that's uh, problematic. Uh, any fun collapse coming soon? Yes, I have a whole bunch. Uh, I have to check my schedule, but yes, there's a bunch of really, really interesting ones. Alex, what's the cause of American declining birth rates? I would say uh, people going into higher education, uh, people choosing to have sex later on in life. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of issues. Thanks. Thanks for exposing them that Mr. are true. Well, we don't know if they're true, right? We still don't know for a fact, right? But it's evidence, right? The fact that he's running away from it, that's evidence in that direction, right? Because again, if if you guys accuse me of like, yo, Alex, what about all those allegations about you? I'd be like, what allegations? Like, let's fucking talk about it, right? Because I know it's, uh, I know it's uh, false. Uh, JLP's closet is deeply closeted. I would very much think that's probably true. Be respectful next time. Maybe he won't leave. Uh, yeah, I really doubt there's gonna be a next time. Also, I did try to be respectful, but I'm not gonna avoid the truth uh, just because it makes someone uncomfortable. Uh, he literally rage quit after talking about being non-emotional. I know, it's just so funny how these guys are such hypocrites. Uh, that's like the biggest thing, he's just such a hypocrite. Uh, okay. J JLP was obviously running away from uncomfortable truth. Yep, that's what it seemed like to me. Uh, he, he tells people to uh, <laughs> to get married, never got married himself. Yep. Uh, uh, how about that? Jesus didn't run away from when he was accused. Uh, Alex, maybe he was because he because he was unable to discuss pegging techniques with Jeff. Uh, yeah, no, looks for a lot. I've had you on before. Well, it's not going to be on this stream because uh, I want to I want to close it out. I also got shit to do, but I can have you on another time. and We can have a debate. Just shoot me an email. Uh, all right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. That was fun for me. Uh, I always enjoy calling out hypocrites. I uh, appreciate you all for tuning in. We'll do uh, I'm, tonight. I'm going to be on Vital Messages Dating Show, and then I'm going to do a stream on Wednesday. So we can discuss this. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Appreciate you all. Until next time.